Thank you for your handy, Michelle. Good. I like to text sometimes to make sure I'm coming through loud and clear. I can still see we have a few people joining, so I'll just give it another minute. Okay, so the participants have, um, have steadied and they're joining great. So um, I think it's time to welcome everyone. So good evening to, on this fantastic evening. It's great of you all to join us when the weather outside is so, so great. I hope you have managed to join in from gardens or somewhere where you're able to, um, to take in the fantastic weather before it breaks up for the weekend. Um, I'm Michelle Butterworth, I'm ITRO Senior Commercial Manager for the UK and Ireland and shortly I'll be handing over to our guest speaker Marcus White who will be sharing his usual high energy and passion for digital dentistry as he delivers tonight's webinar Reinventing Dentistry for the Post-Covid Era. So first for some housekeeping to ensure you all get the most from the event, to manage audio quality all participants will be muted. You're all invited to ask questions as they come to you throughout the presentation by using the Q&A tool. Um, anyone that's shy and would prefer not to be not to have their name mentioned um, can tick the uh, anonymous button and Marcus will do his best to answer as many questions as possible in the Q&A session at the end. So that's all from me for now and handing over to Marcus. Hello everyone. Um, thank you ever so much for attending on this hot hot evening. Um, I promise to uh, reward you for your attendance uh, and give you uh, lots and lots of content. I'll smash all the content I can into the 60 minutes that follow. Um, so thank you guys for attending. Thanks to Align and Itero for, for having me here. Um, and yeah, I'm going to share quite a lot of new content tonight, actually, uh, that we've uh, thought up during the COVID uh, pandemic and then put into action over the last three weeks. Uh, I've been really pleased at how it's uh, panned out for us. So um, let's begin. So tonight uh, we're talking about ITERO and how I believe it's reinventing dentistry uh, and why the time is now to commit to digital in the post-COVID world. Um, as you, those of you know me know I've been digital for about six years uh, and been uh, speaking about it for maybe half, uh, half of that time for three years. And a lot of that time it felt like people weren't sort of ready, you know, uh, and I really feel that uh, the pandemic has changed people's mindsets about change, about digital. They've seen in the communication methods that we've all adopted over the time that 
the time really is now. And, and, and I truly feel that uh, a lot of my audience has sort of woken up to that realization, uh, which is great for me, uh, but great for them because, you know, I, I'm just going to be here sort of talking my experiences and I'm waiting for that click, you know, I'm waiting for uh, that, that little light bulb in everyone's head to go, ah, you know, I see how that could benefit me and my patients, my practice now. So, and I think we're at that moment. So uh, I hope you all agree. Uh, I've said to uh, my, uh, my messages, it's a Daddy, standard Daddy, practice Daddy, Daddy, for my daughter, Martha, to come in and say hi. Do you want to say hi, Martha? Oh, okay, well, well, she'll come in. Don't worry, you go watch Peppa, okay? I'm not so that is normal. It's part of the charm. But you go have your water, darling. Okay, good girl, good girl. There we go. Um, let's move on. So a little disclaimer, which I have to flash up in before your eyes. So I don't have to read every word, but the, the gist of it is that, look, uh, everything I'm saying to here tonight is, is my opinion uh, and it works for me, but you must exercise your own judgment in your own jurisdiction as to whether you want to implement any of it or not. Uh, in the main, I want to inspire and, and, and spark some creative juices, okay? So what are we covering tonight? We are gonna cover the digital consultation, uh, which is one of my mainstays. Uh, we're gonna cover the Invisalign outcome simulation. Uh, we're gonna cover a new topic called the DHA, which I'll leave dangling there uh, for now. Uh, we're going to cover digital triage, and then at the end, we've got some interviews. So what I've done is uh, I've interviewed some other ITRO users or some other dentists who are new to ITRO uh, and seeing what they think about the concept now after COVID uh, and what they think about things. The one thing that unsurprisingly ties all these bits of content together is the ITRO, all right? And for me, it is now central to everything we do uh, in our practice and, and it's central to all the themes I'm talking about today, okay? So as a little intro, I wanna start with uh, a table we've put together recently called Digital Always Wins. Uh, and I'm gonna walk through this to, to make very, very clear that it is no longer um, optional whether digital is good for the world or, or dentistry. So let's begin with increased communication. So. Um, we find time and again that enables us to discuss cases with colleagues, discuss dental problems with patients, and dental uh, digitally triage future problems. Uh, we also, like the other uh, digital uh, communication apps such as WhatsApp, Instagram, and they allow us to blend our communication uh, patterns with our patients. So in the olden days, you just had either email, which is quite cold, or face-to-face. -face. And now we like to use a whole array uh, of these tools to create a much better uh, connection with our patient base. We find we get increased efficiency. Every single digital process is faster and more accurate than its analog counterpart. That is no longer up for debate. That, that's an evident fact. So whether it's an email you're sending, which is obviously faster than posting a letter, but it's not just the the action that's faster, it's the process involved. So with an email, you write it, you click it, you send it. Uh, with a letter, you've got to find the paper, write the letter, find an envelope, write the envelope, find a post, a postage stamp, find a post. You know, the whole process is long and unwieldy. And that, that's just one metaphor for digital as a whole, that it makes every, every part of the process much faster. Uh, compare internal scanning with impressions, and you've got a similar uh, analogy. Uh, and we've also got digital consent, which we'll come on to later. Increased compliance. So I talk about a million words. Um, I talk about the fact that black and white words in your clinical record are no longer enough to evidence what took place. When you have a tool that can take a 3D color image of what you did uh, and how you left the patient or how they started your journey with you, why wouldn't you be employing that? Uh, and digital across any field equals recorded. It creates a little digital footprint which stays forever, which is searchable very easily. Uh, and, uh, and, and so for those reasons, it just, that compliance is there. And if you choose not to use it, I'd have to beg the question why. Um, there is decreased storage. So if you, if you don't have solid analog models, you don't have anywhere to store them. The entire consent process of printing a document, um, scanning the document um, and then shredding it is really unwieldy and, and the place to store them is an issue. So um, in addition, any of the staff required to do those things is, uh, also adds costs and whatnot. 
Um, once digitized, you'll find you have additional space for other things. You might find you have a room that you don't use anymore for study models because you can use it for uh, scanning. So all these things we've found over the years and, and what you're seeing is this is not my opinion, this is my experience over six years. These are facts that I've experienced. Decreased cross-infection risk, we're gonna see later, digital is clean, okay? So there's no physical impression material, and there's no transference potential. If when I'm sending a, an impression, if you will, it's just a click of a button, then it has to be better for everyone. And in addition, digital minimizes attendance need, okay? So if my patients have to come less because I'm doing things more efficiently, or because I can re review them remotely, as we're gonna talk about, this also decreases infection risk. We have the upskilling of staff, which uh, is so important. Uh, intraoral scanning and the upload of your patient database can be carried out by treatment coordinators, hygienists, nurses. Um, and in addition, uh, as you'll see us uh, use a bit later, video consults uh, of in the preclinical phase, that is looking at an ITRO scan that you may have taken and then uh, discussing it over Zoom uh, means that you can do clean checks in that way. You can do some consults in that way. And all of that increases the upskilling of your other team members while you are doing other things, probably in some sort of gown, sweating heavily in 28 degree heat, which is what I was doing yesterday. And finally, more, most importantly, we get to increased profitability. Okay, Now, the wholesale commitment and adoption of digital systems and workflows always ends in higher profits. All right, It is normal for you all to have a consideration about the initial investment in a piece of tech and the change it might make to your daily lives. But what I've seen proven time and again is it will increase your profits because it increases your efficiency. All right, less material waste, less staff to carry out an analog process and all carry out at a greater speed. Let's have a look at the quality of digital records that we are carrying out. That's pretty compelling, right? Uh, and what you'll see me do later is I use the ITRO screen as my basis for assessment, okay? My eyes, good as they are, and a small mirror, are not as good as that screen. They're not as clear, they're not as large. So I scan first in my DHA, my dental health assessment, and I look at that so that it enhances my ability to assess, all right? I'm like one of those robots, those little uh, cyborg things with a little heads up display on my eyeball. So I've now augmented myself with this tech, okay? And that's, that's, yeah, hopefully that will inspire you. So let's recap as well on digital record keeping. Anytime you carry out any process digitally, you accidentally leave a permanent record, be that email, intraoral scans, or a video consult. And I'm a big, big fan of that, okay? If I'm ever asked by anyone called your honor uh, why I did a particular piece of dentistry or how it was carried out, I want to pull out that level of clinical record, okay? And that looks like I take my job seriously. Um, because every time you scan, you're effectively recording every key step of the dental process. So, a bit of a serious start there, but, uh, but all good juicy stuff. So let's go to the digital consultation. So um, when intraoral scanners were invented, uh, they were uh, sold to us to improve the accuracy of impression taking. And then I accidentally found out that the impact they had on our consultation process was a massive, all right? So, and it was really ITRO that changed that for us because of that big screen they have. And it meant that I could see things better and our patients could. So that's where I'm gonna start, where it all kind of started for me. 
the digital lens. So for over 200 years, we have seen teeth one at a time in the reflection of a dental mirror. Now for the first time, we see the dental system as a whole. The touchscreen interface allows us to demonstrate our observations to the patient in a way they understand. For the first time, they see their own problems in color on screen. There is no hiding from it. In addition, there is no reliance on trusting the dentist. They trust what they see. Let's have a little look. So this case is not dramatic, okay? There's some early lesions, there's a cavity, there's some calc, but still, you know, it might be three, 400 pounds, but that patient now understands what we're talking about. I don't have to have them understand radiographic records. They can see the lesions, they can see the cavities, they're on board. So I talk about one million words, not one million words per second, though I have been uh, told that I speak quite quickly, but what I'm saying here, is that a picture, as you well know, is worth a thousand words. And it refers to the notion that some complex ideas can be conveyed with just a single picture. And this picture conveys its meaning or essence more effectively than a description does. And as such, surely a scan uh, equates to a million words. So here I'm gonna show two very famous patients who turned up at my practice very shortly after I uh, got my first ITO. And this patient said, I need some new veneers. Uh, and once we have scanned her and showed her some of these views, she agreed with us that she needed more than just a few veneers, okay? But when she looked in the mirror and just saw her front teeth, you know, the, the more problems at the back, people don't focus on them. They don't even smile widely. So, you know, it's blocked from their own mind, if you will. So once you show them to them as it really is, they completely buy into any solution you're going to propose. And obviously this patient needed full arch restorative with, with implants, you need full arch implants if it was. Uh, and then when we said, what colour would you like? And she said, I'd like them to be a bit whiter. We said, well, we need to address your lowers also. So um, this is what it looks like when we sort of demonstrate these things to the patient. They often say the words, they look disgusting. That's what they often say, time and again, even when they don't, even with people with nice teeth say that. But they see the problems in a way we cannot show them any other way. You can see the perio here quite clearly. Uh, and you can see when we look at the lowers, again, there's a bit of perio there. They're worn, they're tired, they're broken down. They need uh, restoration, okay? And you cannot do that with either a hand mirror or a, a dental mirror, you just can't. There we go. And then we go on to restore her like that. It's all good, everyone's happy. And we get this chap, comes to see me and says, I have a broken tooth, is what he told me. <laughs> and I said, you have more problems than that, sir. You've got more problems than that. So he had some gaps, he had some perio. We didn't need to lose all of his teeth. Uh, we did a combination uh, restorative approach with implants and others. Uh, but again, when we showed him his problems in this way, you know, I don't have to say anything, do I? It, it says everything for me. That's what I call the occlusal heat map. I'll teach you some other of my little phrases that you can reel out and impress patients with. Uh, but that shows how heavy the bite is and it's, it's really useful. And then again, we went on to restore them. So once we'd learned the value of that, we were like, well, that's working very well. What should we do now? Uh, and in essence, to cut a long story short, um, we had our treatment coordinators carry out the scans instead of me. Uh, and have the initial conversations with the patient. And the reason for that uh, was because we wanted to validate a patient before they saw me. So what does validate mean? It means that I realized that I was seeing patients with consults and even with a scanner or whatever, sometimes they still said no, okay? And, and when I sort of drilled into why they said no, uh, it was one of two things. They either didn't want what we were discussing or they couldn't afford it, okay? So I felt it would be sensible to establish those two things before they saw me. 
and that was the process of validation. So a validated patient is a true customer who wants one of your treatments and can afford it. There you go. In the pre-COVID world, carrying out a full clinical and radiographic uh, examination on a new unvalidated patient was costly and wasteful. So what I'm talking about here is where we see a patient, we write a big old report, uh, we take an hour doing the consult, maybe two hours writing it up, um, and, um, and then nothing happens. And sometimes we know it's not gonna happen even before we write the report, and that's the real heartbreaker. We just know we didn't, they, didn't, they couldn't afford it or they didn't want it, and we know that, and we still have to write those notes, okay? So now it's also unsafe and inadvisable. You know, I don't want to have those interactions. I don't want to waste my clinical time at this time when it's at its most precious, unless it's appropriate, okay? So as such, you must validate your new patient before any clinical aspects are added to the workflow. So here we have one of my treatment coordinators carrying out a pre-clinical intraoral scan, all right? Little video to show what that feels like. Have a seat there, Sam. I'm here, that's fine. Okay then, Sam. How are you today? You're all good? Yeah, good, thank you. You find the practice okay? I did, I went into the first call, yeah, and I was just sounding. You did? Down, but I found it, so you got a little lost, but yeah, you found us. I found it. Uh, you come far from my no, just Penny Bridge? Penny Bridge, and 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, how can we help? What is it that you're looking for? I think just a wider smile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a bit more confidence with my smile and just a bit wider. So, uh, what we'll do today is we'll take some digital scans of your teeth, uh, which will allow us to talk about your case together in more detail. Um, we'll talk about some of the treatment uh, services that we offer. So, we'll talk about, uh, you know, the kind of things that we do um, and how much things cost and how you can finance it. So, basically, everything that you need to know about your consultation today. Okay. Does that sound all right? Sounds good. Uh, can I have a seat in the chair yeah. for me over there? We're going to scan the lower teeth first and then the top teeth and then we're going to register how your teeth fight together. Okay, if you want a moment out of rest or anything, just give me a, a wave of your hand and we'll do just that. <clears throat> the digital scanner that we've got here. Um, it basically just takes many, many pictures and puts them together into a 3D model. Chances are you would have needed some dental impressions, mm. uh, but this kind of tech uh, digital dentistry we're moving more towards, wow. which has replaced uh, the requirement for all of that now, which Makes is fantastic, sense. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Last little bit here, just uh, bite your teeth together there at the back, like you normally do. Over there. You can have a seat across on the sofa again, well, thank you. That's smart, isn't it? It really is. Nice bit of kit, isn't it? Yeah. So, see the lower teeth here. A little bit of crowding here at the front, yeah. as you're probably well aware of. Um, and a couple of uh, silver fillings again, which is standard sort of NHS dentistry. Uh, things that you've had done um, at your, your own dentist along the way. Just to, you know, for your consideration, uh, we can run uh, an outcome simulation to show you what an orthodontic technique could deliver. It's maybe not a conversation entirely for today because that's not what you've come in for. Yeah. Uh, but if there comes a time where you may want to consider some aesthetic improvements to your smile, mm -hmm. then just bear in mind that there's, you know, there's some options available to you. Okay. But yeah, this line could uh, correct a little bit of crowding that we see in these lowers, uh, but your aesthetic options for your treatment at the front mm. would maybe add some material to improve the length of these teeth. Yeah. So we could do one or two things. We could either contour these in these incisal corners here uh, to bring some softness back back to those incisal edges, and maybe think about something like uh, composite or uh, porcelain veneers might be uh, too much for you to consider just now but composite is tooth coloured filling material and that's what we use for doing fillings in back teeth yeah. Well, that's an option, yeah. So yeah, food, uh, food yeah. for thought, no yeah. doubt for the time being. You know, there's some options available to you. Okay, that's good. Uh, but for now, are you, you're just thinking about the whitening yeah, just to keep now, things off yeah. and then... So the whitening is 229. 
you, you're comfortable with that? Yes. Yeah, so what we'd seek to do today is take maybe a hundred pound deposit to secure the fabrication of your whitening trays, and then the balance will be payable when you come back to have them fitted. Uh, we'll get the whitening trays ordered for you, mm -hmm. so which normally takes about two weeks for the lab to make them, and uh, then we'll book you at the same time a checkup with one of the dentists to go through just a normal routine checkup like you've ever had done before, and then we will um, hopefully, if everything's looking uh, all in order, we'll fit you white and interest for you. Okay. Does that sound all right? Sounds like a plan. Thanks. So we'll head upstairs, yeah. uh, we'll take a deposit and we'll get an appointment in the diary for you, Tom. Sounds good. Okay, Thank you. fabulous. So, two things there. Um, one is that everything we're talking about today involves the use of that scanner to communicate things to patients better and to effectively improve your consult and your assessment and all that stuff. I don't talk about it using for restorative dentistry once today, uh, and most of what I talk about is, is, is on this subject. But it's worth mentioning that we place 500 implants in our practice, we have an on-site digital lab, uh, we fit circa 1,500 to 2,000 porcelain units, all scanned with our ITROs and all created in our own digital lab. The reason I don't talk about that as much speaking plainly is because most of the world isn't quite ready all right and i find this more compelling to get people on uh to get people on the road so to speak but once you're on the road then i'm happy to help you with the other aspects so yes it can scan all kinds of dentistry and we do it all the time and we are completely digital we don't have impression material in our practice second thing i want to say is that yeah it's a process all right i used to think that the magic of uh, of our sales process was down to me but it isn't it's a process it involves following a certain steps uh, and anybody can follow them and that i believe is true so we'll we'll continue to sort of round that message home shortly but so here what happens after uh, the um preclinical consult is what we call case conferencing so me and my treatment coordinators can review the case and make sure the things they've discussed are appropriate uh, and if i want to tweak it or uh, get a message to the patient in advance of me seeing them we can so it's it's about the consent being a process not an event okay treatment options are given they return to me to discuss a particular part of that in more detail and so we continue refining down discussing risks and benefits okay so so all this process creates a much more robust and comprehensive consultation process does it work so uh, you want to know if uh, if this little process uh, converts patients. So I entrust every penny of our two million uh, annual revenue uh, to be seen by our ITRO and TCO team before they see me. When we started this experiment, it was brave, but it was an experiment. If it didn't work, we could always pull it back to me, but everybody sees the ITRO and my treatment coordination team before they see me, okay? And it's a thing of wonder and beauty because I only see them when they're prepared to move forward. So, a bit more numbers for you, but in the five years that I've been with digital, we've doubled revenue, so we've added a million to our turnover. Um, and in the first year that I bought an ITRO, we added 33% in one single year, when the UK, as a, as a, as a GDP, had added 1.8%. So, yeah, it works. Um, so patient validation can be carried out remotely, digitally, and by team members other than a clinician or with minimal input from a clinician until absolutely necessary. Patient validation ensures that radiographic examinations are not carried out until the appropriate part of the process. This reduces risks to the patient and decreases clinical record workload on the clinician. So what we're saying is this is what it looks like. We take some ITRO scans, we offer some treatment options, we then discuss costs, and uh, if the patient wants to, we discuss finance options, and then we deliver a consent package. So all those parts can happen before we add the clinical parts to the process, okay? Then we get two yeses. Do they want what's been discussed? Yes. Can they afford what's been discussed? Yes, right, off we go. And now let me be very clear, when they do meet me, I have, per I have permission to be a dentist, okay? They've not seen a dentist yet. They know they've not seen a dentist yet. So if I see additional things that change the costs or refine the treatment plan, then that's to be expected, okay? But we've gotten closer to it and we've simply removed the patients who, who yeah, weren't in the right place effectively. 
So now it's appropriate to add the clinical parts to the process. So for those who've not seen me before, this is one of my, my favorite and most, most famous slides. It's a deconstructed apple crumble, okay? And it's there because what happens is this is what you have when you go to posh restaurants. And what they do is they take a normal apple crumble and they take all the elements out of it and they spread it about on the plate. But when you eat a piece of it with your spoon, it still tastes like apple crumble, okay? And whatever, in whatever part of the country or world you're in right now, and however you carry out your own consultation, all those processes, all those ingredients are still in mine, just the same as they're in yours, okay? But I'm just carrying them out in a slightly different order, for reasons I feel are better and more efficient. So that's the digital consultation, and it works very, very well, okay? So now we're gonna move on to the DHA, which I invented about two weeks ago. Um, so what happened was we uh, were coming back from COVID and I was concerned about batching. I was concerned about how was I gonna, the little tiny appointments that we have in, in dentistry, if I was in gowns all the time, how would I be able to do that? So we realized we'd have to batch things and I'm a big batcher. So if something could be done all together, then it's really helpful and I try and do that. So yeah, that's the introduction. So let me walk you through it. So the DHA stands for the Digitally Enhanced Dental and Oral Health Assessment or DHA for short. I'm just gonna play you a little video to paint the picture. Hi, so welcome back. After COVID, you doing well? Yeah, busy. Yeah. And um, did you get our forms by a doctor sign? I did. Good, well That's the right answer. And um, so, so I'm going to supplement the audio because it's a little echoey. So what we do. A week before they attend, we send by a process called DocuSign the risk assessment form, COVID risk assessment form, and the medical history. That comes back. So everything we do is digitally, even the admin. We've changed a couple of things uh, and improved and enhanced. So checkup is now called the dental health assessment. Historically, we've had two 10 minute checkups throughout the year. Mm. And so we're going to take that second 10 minutes and stick it on for the other one. Okay. So what's you're going to get 20 minute, very comprehensive dental health assessment. Yeah. We're going to scan you digitally every time. Uh, there's a couple of reasons we're doing that. The first is that we saw this disparity between new patients seeing all of our new toys and existing patients not. Uh, and so this is true. I, our loyal patient base, everyone at our practice is on plan. They uh, kept paying solidly through the pandemic and uh, I felt we owed them. And, uh, and I was grateful for them for doing that. And I, I had felt there was a disparity between new patients getting to see all of our cool stuff and our existing patients just having checkups. So hence. So since COVID, if we now get a drill out or get some scale out, we have to get down up. So therefore, for the hygiene side of things, it's important that we know if you're going to need to have a sonic scale or just a hand scale. Uh, and therefore we brought it all back to basics. It's an don't still prescribe properly, you decide what kind of hygiene, what kind of everything. And then your certification is probably not you, but if you need a filling, then we can actually batch it and do the hygiene and filling. So once again, the point there is that, I don't know about you, but our patients, you know, you decide what recall period they're on and it's almost like they're on that effectively till they're dead. You know, I'm going to see every six months until one of us dies. But then that's not appropriate because things can change. And right now, because of the division of AGP and non-AGP, I want to know where that patient is going to have their hygiene. Are they so periodontally compromised that they need a sonic scaler or will hand scale suffice? So I wanted to treatment plan uh, my checkup patients in that way. So I want to see them and decide which way they're going to go. So it's just about being more organised. Um, and whilst you've had scans for in this line of things before, the ones we're going to be doing now will allow us to do comparative analysis. So every year we can have a look and look at some key things like otherwise known as itero time lapse. Okay, but that doesn't mean anything to patients. So I say the words comparative analysis. And I say it as often as I can because it makes me sound clever. Good move. Yeah. Have you taken one? Uh, have you got one that's received in any way? Mm -hmm. One of the questions the patient saw that always wanted to know we've given subjective answers to, we can now ask it for them. So those things that patients want to know are, are my teeth wearing? You know, so uh, do I have to wear this mouth guard that I hate? Well, we'll find out. We'll scan you for a couple of years and see if they are wearing or not. And if they're not, you don't have to wear that appliance. Are my teeth moving? I've had Invisalign, I wear my retainer, but are they moving? I'm panicking about that, we'll tell you. Are my gums receding? Um, I don't know. Um, so all these questions they've always ever asked us, we can tell them the answers to. And as you see, 
this was the last step. You know, when Itero was invented, they wanted us to scan everyone. And I was pretty good at scanning most people, but I still didn't scan every checkup. But, ne but now we do. Thank you, everyone. Um, this is my zero, this is a scanner, this is a scan tip. Yeah. And we are um, going to do this without a retractor. So if I was doing normal dentistry, I would maybe always have a retractor in. So I'm not very well practiced at scanning like this, but I have been, but I've done 18 today. So uh, we should be all right. So we're going to give some top tips as we go. So my, we start the middle line, we go and then pull it. I tend to have a little pivot point on my little finger here. And we just swing. And then we come back and we do the other side. And then we go do the buckle on the tip. It's meant to reflect. She says, do use that finger pivot. And I'm going to come and swing it around. So far, so we've got OK. Just to the midline again. And then we're going to go and do the exact same process on the other side. And then we've just got these nice ledges to do. Which I'm holding the lip for. Sometimes you get some saliva in this or a few more aspects. Uh, if you do get that, just get the cheek to kind of dry the teeth. We'll do that in a minute. That's a pretty quick, nice and easy scan. We took one earlier today with mandibular tour on it, so you get some really good definition on the so the jaw there. Just try and dry your teeth for Just want to swallow and do that thing. There you go. Perfect. Very nice thing. I'm going to come over the top. Which you can do your arch to do. And I'm saying those. Right on the spine. Spin around. Back in the middle. Spin around. Just kind of close for a That half close just lets the lips relax a bit. You want to catch a like this, the For those that haven't used other scanners, um, yeah, the Itera is the best uh, at self-editing. So um, other scanners on the market, if you caught some lip or something like that, you'd actually have to physically edit it and cut it out with your finger and things like that, or it just really throws it. So uh, you wouldn't know this if you've not seen other things, but the Itero does all that for you, makes it incredibly user-friendly. <laughs> Something like it never happened. Blue beans, missing data, so we're going to go back and capture those bits. Like that, like that, and. So I'm keen to get my video, I think. Hello. Hi, Okay. Um, yeah, I just need you to bring your back together. So, can you just stay on the screen, Rebecca? So, we've got two buttons. We've got the scan button, that's the prescription button. Scan button is what we've just done. This one kind of renders it to a point where you can look a bit, a bit clearer, and this bit then sends it off. If we just watch, you know, it's not excellent television. So these are quite good top tips. So now I've taken to scanning the very first thing I do in the checkup or dental health assessment so that I, then I can process the scan. And then when I want to show the patient, it's already finished. So you see those little bits of holes, it, it patches them in when it gets processed properly. So usually you might look at that with the patient then, but then all they see is the little gaps. Okay. So hence, 
go to the little email button, which basically sends it off, for, um, sends it to Align Tech. But in that process, it kind of completes the render. So that's what I'm uh, encouraging you to do. Go through all of those four windows, click it off, and then you'll reopen it up when you want to show yeah. the patient. You can do that, and then patients just start asking what the green bits are. Okay. So if we actually send it off and then reopen it, it will fill those spaces and it will polish it all up and make it really, really pretty. So I do that. So that's one of the reasons I scan right at the very start. But then when we go and do the normal clinical checkup, all this stuff will be happening. And then when we finish, it's at the page up at the end, it's ready to be reviewed. So we maybe we'll just bring um, Skinner. So we'll come back to that to review with Helen, which we Okay. Right, Helen. So now that's rendered, we're uh, just going to look at the viewer and have a little look at that. And then afterwards, we're going to do some comparative analysis. So there were quite a few buttons there, but one viewer, which is what we're going to do. Another one's an Invisalign outcome sim. So had Helen not had Invisalign, I could show her what her teeth could look like straight, and we're going to look at that later. And the third button, which I do do, is the I Tiro time lapse or comparative analysis. And we're going to have a little look at that and how valuable that is. I use every opportunity I say you to use the words comparative analysis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so as you can see, I always use this now for my assessment because I can't see teeth that well in my own eyeball or a mirror. So I don't see them in this and whether they're here. You see how crystal clear that is? It's great. So moving forward in terms of comparison, uh, you just told me that the easier of things every night, next one, little one day holiday, which you're very much entitled to. Uh, so if you ever go, oh, well, I wonder if they have space that would work, it was working, it's you know, I have some things that piece of mind and I can do that, which is lovely. Um, and other things like where, which you know, pre, pre treatment, you know, where on those, which we expect to not be progressing because you're running your teams at that time now. Again, we can confirm that scientifically to just what my opinion is. So, again, that, that, talking about how I'm now going to treatment plan the hygiene that patient needs, the frequency, the type, the length, etc., we can consult on that together, you know? So it might seem something simple, but we can both look and go, look, it's been however long since your last hygiene session. You've barely built anything up. Your BP is this. So that's what I'm talking about, bringing it back to basics and at the same time, bringing it back to the future. All right. So we're looking there and then we can collaboratively decide how, how often we should see them. Um, I knew I was going to do that. So, so don't worry. We've got this. Hi. So. Come on, come on. There we go. I use every opportunity I say you to use the words comparative analysis. <laughs> but, uh, well, so, as you can see, I always use this now for my assessment because I can't see teeth that well in my own eyeballs or a mirror. So, uh, yeah, took my hand scale. Yeah. So I'm comparing two scans from two years apart. So I'm just looking at a little bit of yellow, 0.2 mil of difference. I'm just looking at this red incidentally now. You see the tissue inflamed, yeah. not inflamed. <laughs> Even that <laughs> is impressive. So there you go. So it is interesting. Uh, 
So I'm looking, oh, I'm not playing it again. So I'm looking forward to scanning someone with really dirty teeth. It hasn't happened yet. Um, three weeks in, everybody's had really nice, healthy teeth. But I'm looking forward to finding some apple or some cheese or something so I can use it as my oral hygiene tool. You know, instead of picking bits up with a probe, I'll just go, look at that, look what you've done. So as you're seeing, ITERA is currently reinventing the way we carry out the checkup at our practice and everybody's buying into it and you can understand why. So let me show you some of the mechanics of it and why, uh, what we're planning to do. So the attendance of a patient to be assessed for a problem only to leave and have this scheduled now seems archaic. So what I'm talking about is patient comes to your checkup, they point a tooth and they tell you while you're there, they're there that it's broken. Okay, I'm like, well, that's brilliant, but I've got to send you away again. And I'm not saying that obviously the face-to-face -face assessment is over, no, but could we use these scans to help dig digitally triage in the future? The answer is yes. So it makes far more sense to increase your ability to prepare and plan in advance for patient's attendance. Pre is key. So if we could combine a pre-attendance questionnaire with intraoral scanning, we could get gold standard digital triage. So we're going to talk about that later, but there's the concept. So what we've done with the checkup and hygiene is say to the patient, and everyone's bought into it, they don't, you know, you'd think, will there be backlash? Will there be a problem? We've said we've taken a second 10 minute checkup and we stuck it onto the other one to create a 20 minute annual clinical exam, which we can then uh, have loads of time. And the weird thing is about is that two times 10, 20, it feels way more than two times 10. Uh, it's really, it's almost a, the same length you might give to a consult, and we're gonna go on to that. So post COVID, we realized we needed to reinvent the old fashioned checkup. We realized we need to bring certain aspects of treatment planning our registered patients back to basics and certain aspects back to the future. By assessing each patient over a single annual 20 minute appointment instead of two times 10, uh, we found a counterintuitive discovery. 20 minutes is way more than two times 10. It feels like loads more time. You're not rushing. You can achieve everything you need to plan your patient's next 12 months of oral health. And that's what we tell them. We're here to see if there's a problem or what hygiene they need for the whole next 12 months. And then we'll reassess them again and do it again. And we'll do it with science. This is important as you need to define not only how often the patient requires professional hygiene, but whether that hygiene will be AGP or non-AGP. And as such, know what session it will be booked under. This also allows you the opportunity to batch treatment. If a patient did need a filling, then it would be sensible to schedule this with the nodrosonic and batch the AGPs together. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, it allows us to do something we had been wanting to do for ages, carry out an ITRO scan on all of our registered patients, effectively uploading our entire patient database to the ITRO cloud for future comparative analysis, assessment of where, tooth movement or recession. Upload your patient base, all right? So uh, in six months time, I will have achieved that uh, and it will be amazing. Uh, and I'll have, you know, and as the years go by, we'll be able to have more and more anecdotal stories about patients who have been motivated to make change because you showed them science, okay? Uh, if you show increased wear, there'd be an argument for either, you know, an occlusal appliance or maybe restorative treatment. So if teeth were moving, uh, then there's more impetus to do something about it than if they have just finished, if they've just moved. It also enables gold standard digital triage should the patient develop symptoms or break a tooth or filling in the next 12 months. Then we can refer back to that scan and, and treatment plan them without them being there, okay? We can then accurate, accurately assess remotely and most likely treatment plan in a virtual manner. So we've got more time, more tech, but more than the sum of its parts. The Digitally Enhanced Dental and Oral Health Assessment, or the DHA for short. So let's have a little look at digital triage. Hi Anna, how are you? Hi there, how are you? I'm all good. So sorry to hear about this tooth of yours. So in advance of this call, I've, I've brought up your digital scans, which we had on record from when we saw you at the start of the year. So tell me which tooth it is that's got the issue and tell me what's happened. Um, well, I've broken a tooth on the, my top right hand side um, it's been painful for a little while when I've been chewing hard foods um, intermittently it suddenly got worse and then on weekend I was eating something and I heard a crack and the back of the tooth broke uh, and now it's been quite sensitive when I've been eating and drinking hot and cold things. Okay got it so looking at this one here do you, which tooth is it from if you're counting from the back 
Just got to tell you how I've done this, by the way. So any scan you take on Itero, this is Itero's best kept secret. My favorite thing is, is uh, yeah, it's in the cloud. I've stated that, but you can down, not download, you can view it on any device. Yeah. So you just log into myitero.com and you can, it'll be the, exactly the same interface as you're used to seeing on your Itero screen. So that's great. And then you just tap in the patient's details and pop the, the, the scan will come up. So what I've done here, and you're going to see more examples of how that allows us to collaborate in practice with that, uh, or, or all our team being able to see those scans. But what's happening here is I've done a screen share, much like I am today for the webinar. So I've screen shared myitero.com whilst talking to a patient about their problem. Can you, can you tell me which one it is? Uh, it seems to be the one just in front of the back tooth. Got it. Yeah. So let's have a really close look at that now together. Okay, perfect. So, so what we see up here, looking at this quadrant, as we call it, we've got four teeth there, uh, white filling in the one behind it, white filling in the one in front, and then a crown. You, over the years, you've had a sort of an array of either white fillings or crowns, and this is actually one of the last ones to be done. Um, so as you probably know, metal fillings are stronger than teeth, so over a period of time, it can cause those forces to impart, you know, to cause a fracture, which basically sounds like what has happened. Your symptoms are concurrent with that. You had some sensitivity and some pain on biting beforehand. Uh, and so that's, that's the likelihood. Mm. Uh, I haven't got your, your x-rays on the screen, but, uh, but I will have a look at those to see if there was any indication of any decay beforehand. But things look pretty tidy and clean here. Your gums look healthy. It looks, looks good. All right. So, um, so yeah effectively broken a tooth here and we're looking at doing a replacement. So I'm going to walk you through some of our treatment options uh, and see which one you have a sort of inkling towards, all right? Okay. Uh, at our simplest, and not what we would normally do, but, but obviously things are a little different now uh, following uh, COVID, it would be, the, the, the simplest of all is if we could leave it, but that tends to leave this filling here a little bit sharp uh, and also you've got that sensitivity, but, but that is one of your options. The second one is we could smooth it, uh, and beyond that, uh, we could put a, a particular material on there that's very easy to place without any treatment, just to patch it over, okay? So those three categories of treatment are what we would call stabilization, yeah? So it's just a sort of fix a problem, patch it over, uh, and if you, you know, solve any, it would solve the sensitivity, but it wouldn't necessarily fix things, so to speak. Okay. Beyond that, we'd also look to at the least do a new filling for you. And usually, like on the tooth behind it here, um, let me just shift that about a little bit, we'd, we'd incorporate the bit that's broken. So we'd take out the rest of the silver filling, add this bit here, and, and just give you a bigger white filling. The white filling would then typically be kinder to the tooth because it tends to flex in the same way as the tooth material, and that's why you've had such a good sort of run from these other guys here. So that's, that's probably one of the ways we uh, consider fixing it. Over and above that, we could look at a crown, which you obviously had before. Um, usually, we'd only go to those sort of measures if more of the tooth was broken, um, but, it, but it is an option there. So um, on the particular plan you're on, the, the costs are unchanged, whichever one of those we do. Uh, but if, uh, just to put it in context, if you're a paying customer, then it would be 150 for a filling and it would be 650 for the crown. Um, the crown would, I'm just sort of answering your FAQs for you here, but the crown would typically um, have an excellent longevity, sometimes as long as 20 years. Uh, a filling, in our experience, still tends to, a white filling, one of these, still seems to carry on for a good 10. So um, given that sort of array, have you got a, a feeling about what, what, what direction you might want to head into? Well, the tooth um, is quite grey in colour, so if I have a white filling with that, um, help with the, the greyness? Yeah, likely. I mean, when we're looking at the tooth here, um, you know, it, obviously as we affect function, improve the function, it's nice to get it looking better too, but the side of the tooth looks really healthy and, uh, and I expect that once we replace that, it'll, uh, it'll all totally look a nicer colour. Um, sometimes you get a little residual shadow like you've got on the tooth next door, but we are talking about your upper six. Um, well, as you can see, uh, this tooth as big as your monitor screen, uh, most people you meet will not. So I think a white fill, it'll be okay up there. That's great. Yeah, I think I'll go with the filling, please. That's fine. So the, the, um, the great thing about consulting in this way for that is that now we can plan accordingly. So as you know, when we do a filling now that involves a drill, 
Uh, we need to get all gowned up and, and, and take things seriously and protect everyone. So, um, so we'll just book that accordingly, make sure we've got enough time in the diary. And what's a wise thing to do at the same time is, is carry out um, a scale and polish for you with an ultrasonic, which is what you normally have, but what we're doing less of these days. So just having a look at this scan well system, tell me what things look like now. I can see that you quite, you know, you, you build this up quite quickly, so you probably uh, be delighted that we can do a nice thorough clean fee at the same time. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that would be super. Thank you. Lovely. So um, all your documents and all your consent and treatment plans will come out to you by email. If you have any difficulties in uh, opening the file or, or working through the app, then just get in touch with one of the girls. But it should be uh, self-explanatory. And the idea then is that when you come for your appointment, there's literally nothing else to do other than have the treatment. All right. So uh, you'll just attend. You'll be ushered to your own waiting zone. Uh, and then we'll get the treatment done and out of the way uh, and get you fixed up. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Marcus. You're very welcome. We'll see you soon. Take care, Loretta. Bye. Bye. It's the future, right? So what might this approach enable? So we're talking about what, what would the approach of a dental health assessment, what would the approach of uploading your entire database on an annual, level, uh, on an annual basis do for you? Well, it would enable gold standard digital triage, which you've just seen there. It would enable better and more comprehensive treatment planning of your existing patient base. Don't they deserve it? Uh, and it's effectively a free consult for your patients. So there is a high likelihood you will uncover cosmetic treatment need. No one's been able to go on holiday uh, or the pub uh, or shopping. So they all have stuff. They all have money burning holes in their pockets. And if you show them some crooked teeth or some yellow teeth, you, you never know what they might ask you for. All right. So we believe that currently this is a task in conversation for the senior dentists in the practice and our practice, practice partners and associate. Uh, however, in the future for subsequent annual scans, of course, hygienists, treatment coordinators and nurses could be tasks in scanning your patients if you want uh, in subsequent years. But we're taking it as an opportunity to have a really good, comprehensive, solid connection with our patients once a year. So you've seen it, that again. It's the same math. It's not changed the business model at all. That's what's really interesting about it. You've not increased any appointment lengths. You've just been smart with the way you're scheduling your time. Right, so that was the DHA. I'm now going to talk uh, for a moment about the Invisalign Outcome Sim. And just so that you, for a time check, we have this, and then we go on to the uh, interviews, I believe. Okay, so um, the Invisalign Outcome Sim is uh, inherent software built into every IT area that allows you effectively to do a live clean check uh, or a live simulation, orthodontic simulation for the patient while they're still in the chair. Okay, and one of our favorite anecdotes was while we were still trialing the ITERA for the first week, okay, uh, which was a rare treat for us because they don't do that all the time, but we, we got to borrow it for seven days. And in those seven days, we did what we were meant to do. And we scanned every new consult for the practice, no matter what they attended for. And we run an outcome sim for them, no matter what they asked for. So, and in two particular cases, they'd only uh, come for a membership consult to join the practice, okay? And one of the things is that you shouldn't just scan someone or do an outcome sim if they've got crooked teeth, because then you're being judgmental and then it makes the you, you feel awkward that you're saying, shall I run an outcome sim about your teeth? So it's better just to do it categorically for everybody and then there's no subjectivity. So that's what we did and we scanned everybody. And then after we did the outcome sim, one girl got out her wallet while still in the dental chair and said, do I pay for that now? And she'd never heard of Invisalign before uh, and had come to simply come for checkups and hygiene to the practice. So that was literally our personal clincher. We were like, okay, we're, we're in here. So let me show you what an outcome sim looks like. Right guys, let's go through an outcome sim. So here's a nice uh, scan of somebody just in the uh, processed file. It's a cracker, isn't it? And I can't wait to see this one. I've not seen it myself, just been told that it's a good one. Looks to be promising. So when I'm going through things with the patient, I always start on this screen so we can kind of amplify the issue that they've probably got a concern with. Okay, so I don't just zoom straight into the outcome sim. I ham this bit up uh, and we, we have a look at things and make sure that um, they're reminded of the reason that they come here for treatment. So, so this is another top tip. Let them vocalize their own, don't be a ventriloquist, let them vocalize their own issues. So when, let it kind of hang in the air there and they'll go, oh my God, look how crooked my front tooth is. 
So always do that. Don't just skip straight to the outcome sim. And we just skip through and we go to the outcome sim. We push that button there. Sorry, let's try that again. Here we go. So from the time you push that button, you get about 90 seconds to talk about the treatment. So uh, let's do... Um, and this is a key, again, this is a top tip. Some things take some time to load. It's just the way it is. So don't stare at the screen. Make sure you use that time to do something in it. So hence at the other, the other example, I let it do its thing while I then carried out the real checkup. And here, while it's spinning, uh, I, I effectively do a very crash course in how Invisalign works. Leave the screen watching and I'll show you what I would do. So uh, I tell a patient that Invisalign, uh, do you know how Invisalign works? Invisalign works by a series of clear aligners, each one slightly the wrong shape for your teeth such that each time you put an aligner in, it exerts some pressure on the teeth and your teeth move. Um, now, most patients like you tend to be crowding and therefore we have to find room uh, for the teeth. And the main way we do that is through expansion. So by expanding the teeth, we end up having a, a greater space, a bigger horseshoe for those teeth to live in. Does that make sense? Yes. One of the other techniques we use is something called IPR. IPR is where we take a little bit of enamel from in between where the teeth contact, no more than half a millimetre, uh, which is a quarter of a millimetre on any given surface. Uh, and that creates a bit of space for the teeth to move uh, and for us to fit in the crowded teeth. And it means that we can avoid the need for extraction. I also then go on to talk about attachments. So it's wonderful. The very first thing you've got to do with this. So just outcome. Okay. 3D controls. My PR, and you've got to hit that, all right? So the first thing they'll look at is that gap, all right? So almost before you start showing them anything, do that and go back. And I'm going to talk about 3D controls more in a minute, okay? But there you go. Now we're impressive, all right? Do the maxillary view, ham it up a bit, show them the key problems and the key solutions that you've delivered, and hopefully have them be amazed possible start crying and train. Then look at the lowers. Patients always say I'm not that bothered about the lowers, but hey, show you that. Okay. Sometimes again, if there's a black triangle there, that was minor. Same again. So let's look at 3D controls. So it's the adjust outcome button and you hit the, the plus and an IPR gadget will come up. Okay. And we're going to do, look at the top in a bit more detail. So get rid of IPR. Now, you get the chance to be fussy. So I call this being a digital perfectionist, all right? So I might want to move that to up and down. So these are the controls on the right here. You got up and down, and front and back, and side to side, and round and round, and all sorts of and tipping, either talk, either root talk or crown, all right? But it's just sometimes nice if you think that, that you want to do a little bit more of a Hollywood, less of a natural thing, and just a little bit of that. All right. You could on this one, it's probably going to prop up the, uh, the IPR, but the, the black line will be just to show you. Come back. There you go. All right. So ev everything's possible on here. Like I say, it's the downside here is to create that black line again. But you see the point. The point is you can do awful lot of stuff to prove that you're a digital perfectionist. So we're going to head towards the uh, close now. One more thing, decreased cross infection. We talked about it a little bit at the start, but dentists have been so worried about how they could get their drill out of its holster again, they maybe haven't considered other infection problems down the line. Impression materials dripping in patient saliva could pose a high infected vector. And remember, whether it does or doesn't, it's something that patients will worry about. Okay, it is not known whether existing disinfection solutions are proven to eradicate COVID virus. These impressions then go to dental labs to be cast into stone models where the virus could be spread. Here's an impression from many, many years ago. We don't use these anymore. We don't have puppy in our building. We are completely digital. I just want to be honest with you and tell you that no one's thought about this as a source of infection. All right, everyone's currently too busy masking up and gowning up because they worry about the drill. You know, no one's thought about this 
when we take one of these and coat it in patient saliva and put it in a little um, cold sterilization bath, I'm not comfortable with that anymore. I'm very grateful that I don't have to do that anymore. Okay, so if you have an ITR input, we're only using it some of the time, wake up. Uh, if you don't have an ITRO, call the people, okay? Because that over there is a cross-infection control miracle, okay? Because we have a disposable tip that goes in the bin, and then the data I go record goes digitally to our lab without any need for this, to go in a bag, to go in a bath, to be grabbed by somebody else later. I can't want to claim that, uh, and I can't wipe it with an FP3 mask and think that's going to do the job, okay? You need something that fixes those problems and you need to communicate that solution to your patients and to people who will be asking what you'll do to minimise infection. This is how we send the scan. Uh, you literally push that envelope. So that's a winner, right? Okay. So thank you everyone. I'm gonna. I'm still in the other bits, but uh, I don't have to work too hard because they're pre-recorded. So what I've done here is that we have three interviews coming up, each of them asking uh, a set of different questions. Uh, they'll be about 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll go on to Q and A for me. But what we try to do, and it was a brilliant idea, and it wasn't mine. It was uh, Michelle's and Sam's to ask people what were making them buy thing, but you know, invest or really consider investing right now. So we're going to start with Ken. Hi Ken, thanks ever so much for joining us today. Um, so, you know, we're going to ask a few questions just about some of your thought processes behind um, engaging with ITRO uh, and considering whether now is the right time to uh, get an intro scanner in your practice. So I've got some questions in front of me, uh, three of them. So we're going to start with, was there, anything, was there anything in particular about the pandemic that's made you reconsider ITRO more seriously? Yeah, without a doubt, and I think I'm, I'm not, um, I like to use my phone and, and my, my iPad, it's just like, when it works, I don't want to fiddle around with stuff, but a lot of folks have, uh, we've all had to think, well actually, I need to do this thing, I need to be able to get, so there's a lot of people learning skills that they that previously they just pushed away and thought, well, I don't really need to know about that, so there's an awareness, there's a greater awareness now, I think, of people that these things actually can, are useful and they can do stuff for them. And um, so I think that that awareness that you can do um, more with digital and it's actually helpful. It's not a it's not a it's not a threat or it's not a nuisance. It's actually going to be an aid and it's going to be helpful. I think that's just I just think people are more receptive about that now. And I think they're more receptive anyway because they're not they're not certain about what's going to happen. You know they want. They know that they're going to be seeing you, they know that they're going to be seeing me, and they're happy about that, but they're expecting things to be different. But yeah. allows us, you know, we've, we've almost got more, um, uh, we're, not, we're more enabled by the patients now, I think, to do things and to change because they're, they're expecting something to be, to have to change. Yeah, it's just how we present that, how we, how we package that, so it's, um, it's, but it works well for us and it works well for them. Just thinking, you know, uh, again, for your personal decision making, one I was going to ask you, what, if you did implement, what do you think the patients would care about? You know, it's often about what the dentist thinks it's going to bring to, to their lifestyle or their delivery of care. What do you think the patients would notice or be impressed about, so to speak? I think the patients are always, always impressed um, or care about how much you care. Um, yeah. and I, and I think That's actually my favourite quote of his, they care about how much you care. So, uh, yeah, you know, now that I've started uh, scanning at a checkup and I look that the attentiveness that I give to them is more amplified. Uh, and and that, that's the key line that Ken said. And I, and I think that, that that's his winning argument there. So what he really said was that COVID's allowed us or enabled us all to have a change mindset. OK. And, you know, COVID's the best excuse right now to do anything new, isn't it? COVID said so. So we have to. So uh, change mindset, COVID gives us permission, patients notice that we care for them more, uh, and what he goes on to say is that it allows us to plan better in ways I've shown already. Number two, so this chap is Matt, uh, and he works alongside me. I'll let him go. Hi, Matt. Thanks so much for uh, coming, agreeing to do this interview for ITRO and our, our webinar. Um, so I've got a couple of questions which I've sent you in advance, uh, and they're hopefully going to paint a picture as to your 
uh, your career uh, and your experience with digital prior to us and then also uh, the benefits you've seen of the way that we use digital in our practice. So uh, the first question Matt is can you tell us a little bit about your professional background please? Okay, so I've been in hospital dentistry principally for 20 years, uh, 10 years of that as a consultant in restorative dentistry, been a specialist for 11 years, specialist in restorative dentistry, uh, prosthodontics, extended ontics. And in terms of experience of um, digital, Prior yeah. to did you in those environments did you yeah. have many digital tools yeah no so very i would definitely describe myself as analog uh, and very much my experience was analog partly through opportunity and partly through uh mindset i suppose is the way of uh, thinking about it so um so since coming here i know we just for the audience we matt mostly uh does specialist endodontics at our practice uh, and that's one of the stories you're going to tell uh, but nonetheless, um, what did you? St what struck you as different about the way that we use intraoral scanners uh, at the courtyard? Yeah, difficult to know where to start because it's almost everything actually. So it is, it's start to finish from a patient uh, almost walking through the door to the moment they leave, um, and, and not just from a treatment point of view. It's an experience point of view from start to finish, and that is a very much a different world. Uh, from, from what my experience and so that's been yeah great to see good so end to end lovely um, and I just wanted uh, to recap on uh, you know the, the, the story we, we had the other day we had a, a patient who, um, who I'd seen for a, a consultation who had a, a previous root treatment and I needed Matt's expert advice on it so uh, talk to us about um, how you went about um, assessing uh, and uh, helping with that treatment plan with this map. Yeah, so um, initially went into you know, logging on through to viewer, viewer to assess the notes um, through which we can then access uh, radiographs and cone beam uh, CT, which means you can put a, a vast majority, from an endodontic point of view, a vast majority of that information together, but not the whole picture. Um, and it was at that point you said, well, if you logged on to Itero, and obviously, no, uh, I haven't, because it's uh, you know, not being overly digital at that stage, um, and still. Um, and then, yeah, third second later, sent me the link, logged on to Itero, um, and I could, and it, the critical thing where that came from advice for you was, from the CVCT, I could tell that uh, the palatal cusp of the upper, right seven um had over rotated and dropped down as a you know as a plunger cusp and that would be an issue from um, tooth fracture risks or uh risk to buc buccal cusps in terms of lateral excursions and that, that's when he said well oh, if you've logged on to it i was like oh no I've just picked that up from the combi but then as soon as you gave me the details and i could then log in itero pretty much gave you Difficult to put percentage on it, but they, virtually everything. But you need you've got the clinician that's seen the patient, you've got the COVI and the X-ray, the notes, and then you've got uh, an uh, effectively the patient's mouth there as well. Yeah, but it was virtually everything that I would need, you know, in order to have a really informed uh, consultation. Uh, and a remote consultation or, or in a specific discussion with that, I say with you. So it was it was a real eye opener for that from a light bulb moment of thinking. Yeah. Good. And uh and just to um complete a pitch for everybody, that that was because me and Matt worked very, very hard. So we were I was on my sofa uh and uh, it was it was gone midnight or approaching midnight. Uh we were just yeah. texting. Uh, so, you know, it's almost this picture, picture of all the digital tools I talk about at webinars. You know, we're, we're using WhatsApp and text. He's logged in via TeamViewer to look at the clinical records and the CBCT. And then finally, to complete uh, the, the, the 360 degree uh, assessment, he's able to log into myitero.com. Uh, and, and Matt's in his pajamas with a cup of tea while he's doing this, uh, which, is, um, which is amazing that we can do that level of uh, diagnosis and assessment. Um, 
Anything else to add there, Matt? Uh, yeah, the other thing is, uh, um, well, people might raise their eyebrows about <laughs> speaking up in pyjamas still talking about work, it's just the way it's working in, in the current circumstances. It also means that job's finished. I'm not going back in the next day checking that out again. That conversation's done. Yes. So in that busy times, it's a tick next to that, that yeah. conversation. And, and you've not had to see the patient for a, for a, for a consult yourself yeah. because you've, yeah. you've gathered everything you needed to through virtual means. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the caveats that you might attach to other, other situations really get, um, get, get virtually disappear. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, thanks ever so much for your time today, Matt. Uh, and that's given a real, uh, real good insight to everybody else about how, uh, how we use the scanner for things they might not imagine. So uh, I'll see you next week uh, and uh, over and out. All right. Cheers. Take care. Bye -bye. Cheers, buddy. See ya. So what messages did we hear there? Well, it's awesome. I love that one. Uh, the ability to discuss cases with our colleagues, but like properly, you, you know, you get it now. You get what it can bring to your team uh, and that we deliver an end-to-end -end digital patient journey. Uh, I just want to say like you cannot really understand how different it allows your communication. It's a profound increase in the quality and depth of communication. The fact that I can take a screenshot like this with the ITRO, draw some arrows on uh, to tell my lab what I'd like them to do with the emergence profile and then just uh, send that to them. So, you know, these are things uh, that we can do now. And finally, the crescendo for Mr. Dr. Clifford Palmer. So, Evening Cliff, uh, thanks ever so much for uh, joining us today for this little interview here. I uh, really appreciate you finding the time. Um, so as you know, we're going to ask you a couple of questions shown at the webinar tomorrow. And, and the, the, the key here is that we just, I think we're going to be asking a lot of insightful questions for why you chose to buy an ITRO right now. And there are the things that happened in your head to make you make that decision. All right. So uh, I'm going to start off with the juicy one. Uh, so Cliff, you brought an ITRO, uh, not before the pandemic, not when you went back, the slap bang in the middle was when you decided it was the right time to make your investment. Uh, so I think, yeah. you know, your answers and your reasons to that are going to prove very, very, very valuable. So off you go. Tell me what, what tell me what happened to make, make that decision. So I, like most of you, was awash with money. Uh, <laughs> during the pandemic, uh, I joke. Um, no, my, my reason for buying in the middle of the pandemic was to make sure I was ready for when they eventually announced we could come back. So I wanted to make sure I had my Otero and I could start uh, my training and get everyone prepared. It seemed like the ideal time. For me, I've used scanners, but I've had a Serent scanner before uh, and I wanted to get rid of powder. So that was one thing on my checklist. Cool. I wanted to bring my nursing staff into being able to scan. Um, and I wanted um, to be able to get such a clear picture and be able to treatment plan with the patient initially nowhere near with actual 3D uh, imagery um, combined with x-rays. And then I couldn't really see how kind of especially with the pandemic, how you could function without such a tool. Um, the money was always an issue because I thought, I don't, you know, how am I going to get the money for it? But then I looked at the finance, that was very affordable. Um, the pandemic has also made me see that I wasted a lot of money on a lot of things. Um, so I felt digital was where it was at, but I needed to modernise. So uh, the Cerebic machine, it's been good to me, but uh, really, I like the idea of scanning low powder, um, involving my team a lot more, uh, and being able to have a digital record of all of my patients whenever I wanted to look at it. Yeah. Phone call, upper left six is fractured. Oh, yeah, upper left six, I've got, you know, I haven't just got an x ray, I know exactly what that tooth looks like from, from 3D, and I can say, and more importantly, my team can start to say, oh, that's going to be a root canal with and they can start to start to treatment plan and discuss options with patients. I'm not saying they can plan and do everything, but really they can start doing a lot of the work that I was wasting time in surgery doing when I could be doing clinical stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, great.
very answer. Another thing that one of the other interviewees said, and I wonder if this is true, but whilst we were coming out of the pandemic, we had a mindset for change. You know what I mean? Changing this yeah. and rebuilding that and doing that. So do you know what? Let's just let's just add that into the mix. Was there was there a part of that? What so like the the teledentistry? Uh, no, just that, really that you know you're, you for, for for a lot of for many years dentistry did the state dentists did the status quo. You know you, you numb up, you do a fill in, you do it again, you yeah. do a check up, and and COVID and the pandemics made us rethink every aspect of the way we do our, our jobs. So it, it's it's just changed the mindset of dentists in a way that maybe that we weren't open to it before. Uh, again, I don't want to put words in your head, but was there any of that in it? So I, th I think with me, I was very aware that I was wasting a lot of clinical time discussing a lot of things when I could really be just be focusing on patient care and getting on with treatment. And especially as I was concerned that time was going to be uh, a lot more kind of pushed, I felt that I needed to involve the team more. Yeah. So lots of the discussions with me not in well I'm involved because I'm kind of overseer it but not involved in all every little aspect of the detail after the system set up. So um, the idea was really get the patient in. I can then you know speak to them and still deliver the service I was doing before and try and relax them and kind of still focus on the things that I'm kind of I feel I'm, I excel at and still um, I, I think it's a good time because even though I'm going to be busy with patients. I've spoken to quite a few who anyway, have gone back excited and energised about uh, uh, an opportunity to do things a bit differently. Um, and, and that's what I see talking to you. Uh, and so, yeah. So thanks for your time. Uh, and um, and uh, as ever, um, I know your rep's been very helpful. Uh, I know Sam's been looking after you. And I, while we're on here, I'll, I'll do that. Because, um, yeah, Cliff did say, and I'm not told, but he was like, why are the reps so nice? Why is Sam doing this? I've already bought it. Why is she, why is she doing this for? So, um, so yeah, didn't, yeah t isn't that something you've, you've actively noticed? Yeah, I mean, you know, because I, I think of myself with patients, you know, once I've fitted that crowd, I'm going to pay for it. They, they could, you know, <laughs> kidding. No, it's just, it's, it's quite unusual, really. Uh, I've been sold a lot of things. Uh, I've probably, you know, you know, I tend to, once I decide I want somebody, I'll buy it. And she certainly didn't have to sell it to me, really. I kind of went finding it. Um, and then, you know, she still, through, throughout the pandemic, actually, she was asking me how I was doing and doing it. And I was, I kind of checked my phone and think, mm, what, why is she asking me that? You know, what she, you know, that's just how you think, don't you, a little bit. Um, but she's, uh, it wasn't about that at all. I kind of approached her and said, well, oh, actually, I am keen on, still doing that and she didn't seem surprised because I think you know she's she getting approached by quite a few people it's just the way forward yeah and I can speak that like over the over the years that I've worked the Iterio reps are all like that they they do maintain continuity uh throughout and try and keep taking your sort of learning uh, and expertise higher so uh so yeah I think we've we've Brilliant. done all of the uh plugging we can do uh so Thanks, Cliff. Uh, I'll let you get back to your evening and uh, no thanks so much for helping out, buddy. All right? Okay, yeah, cool. Thank you very much. All right, dude. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye bye. So, where are we? So, final messages. What have we heard to close? And then you can ask me any questions if you're still here. I'm sure you are. Um, Energizes staff members, all right? It gives them something new to engage with uh, so they love it. Uh, it allows aspects of the business to continue whilst clinicians are focusing on the clinical, okay? Uh, it's an invaluable sales tool and you get invaluable support from the reps. And what I'm hearing is the time is now, okay? The time for deliberation is truly over. Digital is inevitable and most importantly, I was right all along. So finally, just a little video here that depicts what I felt, what happened when uh, COVID came along. Kid on the right is COVID. Uh, the tower is our practices. The question is, what are you going to do to rebuild? This may be the one opportunity we have to design and build the practice we want for the future.
any questions? Last screen uh, before I unscreen. Please screenshot this with your digital cameras and phones and, uh, and get in touch. So uh, I, I welcome any questions that are bigger and broader than you can ask in the next four minutes. Uh, so please get in touch for any help I can offer. And other than that, over to Michelle to, uh, to do the Q&A. Hello, Michelle. Got some, hello, thank you very much for that. We've got some fantastic um, feedback and comments um, from the audience. And we have some questions. So first question, at your practice, how do you validate the patient before booking them in for the scan? And do you charge them for the scanning? So we don't charge for any aspect of our consultation proce uh, process. We uh, take a commitment fee of 50 pounds, which is refunded to them on attendance. And that's just to make sure they do attend. So validation can be done virtually. That's another webinar, but really uh, my treatment coordinators take a scan, have those conversations, and it's not impacting on my clinical time until they've been validated. Next. I think Michelle's frozen. Thanks, Marcus. Um, hopefully, everyone's still with me. I think I've got some intermittent connectivity problems. All right, you're back. Um, yep. Um, so, Andrew Cope. Um, hi, hi. Do you always. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Um, and Invisalign um, stroke eye record. Thanks, Andy. Sorry, what was the question? I was interrupting you. Sorry, do you always scan Invisalign stroke eye record? Yeah, so for the comparative analysis and the things we're doing in the dental health assessment, yes, that's the right scan to do. Uh, when you're doing dentistry, then obviously it's restorative. But yes, Invisalign and eye record for those purposes. Thank you. And so the next question is from Rashan Panju. Um, hi, does an annual checkup halve the checkup revenue or do you double your fees? So it's on a membership basis, um, it doesn't affect the business model at all. So they paid for two 10 minutes throughout the year anyway. It's all subdivided up into their monthly. So really moving that 10 minute and sticking it with the other one doesn't change any part of the business model whatsoever and the patients understand very very quickly the uh the added value we get from it and able to assess them more comprehensively so no costs need to change if you're adopting that model so if you already see um yeah even if it was a fee per item all you'd be saying to the patient is we're going to move your second check up to the first and you'll pay the same throughout the year it is an easier conversation to have if you have planned patients because the um, yeah the numbers are a bit more mystified so to speak but it doesn't increase it doesn't involve increasing fees thank you um, so do you show your patients in viewer before you hit simulation yes yes so uh, ab absolutely so i'll always go to the, the the screen like i say and i call that hamming it up a little bit because it always highlights um, their issue uh, so you know you want to sort of hover on that a little bit if you know what I mean uh, before you go to the uh, the Invisalign side of things where obviously the color and what have you is removed so yeah definitely do that uh, and, uh, and let them absorb that uh, before you show them the magic thanks that's great um, so from an anonymous attendee and um, what do you think about the Itero 5D with caries detection and what do you charge for a scan Think you may have covered that already yeah so well you, yeah I've answered the second one so we don't uh, charge that isn't so you don't have to you know you, you'll all you'll have your own business models and your own rationale and you've seen the value and patients see the value so if you decide that you want to charge a different uh, fee for a particular kind of assessment that is fine uh, but um, but, but we, we don't in our model uh, in answer to your question and the 5d um, I will know those answers more fully in six months, okay? Because well, everything I've done with the ITERA up until two weeks ago was mainly for restorative and mainly for Invisalign. So I haven't been assessing regular checkup maintenance patients with it. So now is the time that I'll be able to, to find that out. So uh, I shall see you in, in the autumn and I'll answer that more fully. 
Thanks, Marcus. So we've got a question from Anna McCade, McDade, sorry. Um, can you explain your hygiene program in a little more detail? My what program, sorry? Hygiene program. Okay. Um, everyone's model's a bit different, but traditionally, I guess, you've got a checkup and a hygiene, uh, and that's happening twice a year. Uh, often the checkup and the hygiene are happening together, and the patient semi expects that they're going to have a, a checkup, and then the hygiene's going to follow. So um, it was about breaking that down and saying all of that stuff was a bit assumptive. You know, you're going to come for the, this, the checkup and the hygiene, and you're just going to keep coming. Whereas now it's saying, no, I'm, I'm actively going to assess my patient, and I'm actively going to decide what kind of hygiene they need for the next 12 months. The likelihood is that it might be, you know, still the same as what you, you had planned already. But the point is, it's not assumptive. You know, you're assessing it and you're assessing it on the ITRO uh, and then you're showing the patient why, if, if needs be, uh, that they need to invest more time in the hygiene or why it needs to be an AGP, ultrasonic or a hand scale. And you're able to have those conversations. So it's almost like I showed at the start, the, the ITRO was incredibly valuable in showing a man with all of his broken teeth why he needed to invest heavily. But now, even on a smaller scale, it highlights to our everyday registered patients why a particular level of hygiene plan is appropriate for them. Thanks, Marcus. Um, another question from Andrew Coe. Um, do you run your own plan or do you use something like Demplan? We are with Practice Plan. Um, and interestingly, uh, I don't want to hurt your brains too much, we have just decided that even though everybody, all our patients used to have 20 minute hygienes, uh, we, we feel now that either with a hand scale or wearing a gown, that's not feasible anymore and it has to become 30. So we are going to have conversations on a one-to-one -one basis about uh, upping the time and, and, and their investment in that time. But again, I feel that the idea is going to make those conversations very easy. Um, so, but yeah, the answer is we're with practice plan, but I apparently I have more bespoke plans inside of practice plan than anybody else. I have like all these little ones uh, that just that allow me to sort of tailor someone into different areas. Thanks. Will you advise to choose element one or element two for a first time buyer? It really, you know, that is completely up to you. Uh, and we have had, you know, we, we will have owned all, all of the suite of uh, scanners at one point. So we've got two element ones, we've got a 5D, uh, we've got a flex, we're currently buying an element two. So it's really about price points and whatever makes you comfortable is, is the right answer at any given time. Because the other inevitability, and I'm sorry if this breaks your heart, it will not be the last scanner you ever buy. Okay, it will not be. And once you begin down the journey and, and seeing the value, you're going to get another one. So don't try and think you have got to get a scanner that's going to be everything for you for the rest of your life. You know, no, buy the scanner that's right for you right now. If therefore it means that it needs to be portable for some reasons, great. Um, I would just to, on that note, the screens are important for sales tools. Okay, so in consultation, the any of the you know the flex is not as powerful. As, as any of the big screen ones. But other than that, pick your price point and you won't go wrong. And then as your needs change, then, uh, then ring your rep. Thanks, Marcos. And um, we're just over um, 8.30. Um, have you got time for one more question? Let's have one more question. <laughs> okay. So, um, the question is, can we also simulate restorative work like veneers, crowns, and show to the patient? Do you have any videos where we can see you doing that? No. So, uh, so no, one assumes that uh, that kind of tech is coming, and we've been assuming that uh, for a little while. But, um, but no, if you want to do um, um, that, then you either need a digital technician or, or however, or, and yes, I do have a video. Um, there is SmileView, okay? So SmileView is an app, uh, a little link that you can get from uh, Invisalign, and it's about showing patients' faces, how they will look like straight. But the app is clever enough that it also just makes things pretty, all right? So we use that a lot of the time for our patients. So it's not inbuilt into the Iteria, but it's an Invisalign product and it's free. So my, it's still free, isn't it, Michelle? Assume it's free, yeah. So we use that routinely, and I just made a video a few days ago. So I'll put it on YouTube, 
Uh, and um, uh, so on my Marcus White Digital YouTube, and it shows you how to do it, all right? And then it's completely free and a really useful tool. Uh, in the video, I'm, I'm actually fixing Tom Cruise's teeth uh, and, and make them shiny and white and straight again. So, so hopefully that answers your question. Uh, now I'll finish. Shall I finish by thanking everybody? Thank Absolutely. You. So uh, I'm having a lot of fun sharing uh, a lot of my new ideas with you, which uh, are proven well. And and all I ever want is for it to sort of stir the creative juices uh, and uh, and and make you think about uh, how you can design your best practice. Uh, so thanks ever so much for tuning in on a hot evening. And uh, as I said, uh, get in touch. Thank you, Marcus. So we'll bring the evening to a close. Thank you so much for everyone for joining us and staying with us. And for the fantastic feedback, Marcus, I'll share that with you um, later. Um, if anyone is on the uh, webinar that is considering purchasing an ITERO, we're also really pleased to be able to share some good news with you as part of our COVID recovery um, support plan we're able to bring to you a 0% interest offering for anybody that's looking to invest in an ITERO in the near future. So if you'd like to find out more details about that, then please contact your local territory manager or ITERO key account manager and they'll be able to go through the details with you. So I thank you so much for joining us. This will be available on a recording if you'd like to forward it to any of your friends and colleagues. And I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Good night. Good night. Thanks again.